All right, this week's survival challenge is selection of a knife that you're going to be using in the woods, acquiring knife skills, and acquiring sharpening skills. So basically, getting a knife and learning how to use it properly in the woods. Uh, we'll talk a little bit first about knife selection. I have five knives up here uh, from brands that I would gladly trust. Um, you can pick whatever knife that suits your fancy. I have a list of 10 attributes that I look for in a knife. The first is it fits your hand properly in every position, whether you're using it for skinning, carving, self-defense, whatever it might be. If it doesn't fit your hand comfortably, if you're not going to practice with it, you're not going to use it. So number one, fit your hand. Number two, uh, manageable effective blade length, somewhere between four and uh, six to seven inches, somewhere there. I say 4.3 to 6.75 because that's the range of the knives I seem to buy. So, blade length 4.3 to 6.75. Most of these are around the 5 to 6 length. Uh, solid flat pommel. That's not always the case on all of my knives. Uh, mostly the Bushcraft Black gets used for this the most, but that way you can use it for a hammer if you need to pound in pegs or to crack your um, walnuts or things of that sort open. One cutting edge, no serrations. So basically you don't want half serrated, half straight blade. Uh, you see that a lot on the Bear Girls type knives, uh, the Gerbers and things like that. Those are really hard to sharpen in the field and it really makes it difficult to baton firewood if needed to. 90 degree spine. Uh, you want the most aggressive spine on the back of this as you can. If you've seen some of my fire making videos, that's how I make my tender a lot of times. You can use it for scraping hides. You can use it for all kinds of things in the woods. So 90 degree aggressive spine. The sharper that spine is, the better. Uh, also, if you get one that doesn't have a 90 degree spine, you can take it to a grinder and just grind it till it's 90 real sharp. That's also what you use for scraping the material from your ferrocene rope. High carbon steel. You want 1095-01 tool steel, something to that effect, that will hold an edge, 1075 even. Uh, these are all good steels for a survival knife. If you are in the coast, you might want to look at a uh, stainless type steel. Um, however, that will limit your abilities to do flint and steel fires. So if you're not going to have, you're not going to have that backup. So you can't just go out and pick a piece of flint off the ground and use it as a flint and steel striker. Uh, sharp point. Uh, almost every single knife I have has that sharp point. So you can use it as a spear. You could use it to drill a hole for your bow drill sets, uh, all kinds of different things you can do with that spear point. Use it to puncture various items. Heavy duty sheath with ferro rod loop. Not all my sheaths have ferro rod loops because they're for different tools or they came with separate knives. If I carry it a good bit and not just carrying it for testing, it always has to have a ferro rod loop which will hold a half inch ferro rod by six inches long, in length. That is one of my requirements just because I always carry that ferro rod with me no matter what. Um, so, good heavy duty sheath that has good retention um, that you'll be able to wear. Anywhere from 1 8 to 3 16 thick. Uh, you want a fixed blade and full tang. The only exception to that I give are for the more Bushcraft Black series. Um, the, this one and the Pathfinder I've used for over a year, beat the crap out of them, and they've held up to everything I've done. These are great little knives at a good price point. So yes, you can beat the crap out of these Morris, and they keep on ticking. So other than that, some things you want to look for, something that's easy to sharpen. Grind-wise, I'll either go with the Scandi or Full Flat as my preferred ones. Uh, the Jeff Whites, a lot of them have convex. They're a lot harder to sharpen if you're not used to it. If you're just getting into this, I highly recommend something with a full flat or a Scandi grind. Some of the um, knives I have up here that I've used, um, the cheapest one by far would be the Old Hickory. You can get these for anywhere from $10 to $35. Great little knife. Um, cheap. This is the one I'm actually going to do the series with just to show you how easy it is to find a you know, durable knife. In the woods. Jeff White makes great knives. If you see my channel, 
I have a ton of Jeff Whites. I love them. Great knives. This one is the uh, Bush HD. Mora Bushcraft Black. Uh, if you're going to go Mora, go the heavier versions so the, with the Black series. Um, either this one or the Pathfinder. I prefer the Mora Bushcraft Black over the Pathfinder personally. The extra length just doesn't seem to help me as much. Um, I think this one's called Western Bear Knives. Fits the hand perfect. It reminds me a lot of my Bushcraft Black, Heavier Duty, Fuller Tang, Razor Sharp. Love it. Anything by Blind Horse or Battle Horse Knives. This is the uh, Pill SK-1 put out by the Pathfinder School. Um, great knives, great company. Some of the best handmade knives you'll come across. The uh, Micarta Scales. Just get even tackier when it gets wet. That's another thing. If it gets wet and the handle doesn't retain its ability to hold on to, you don't want that knife. And my favorite newer maker is Indie Hammer Knives. These things are like art. Uh, he really puts out a really great product. This is his bush cleaver. Um, it's got a few extra uses that I've been kind of testing out. It's you know a really good draw knife with that holder right there. Uh, you can use that as a pry bar as well. All kinds of different adaptations for this knife. You lose a little bit of the uh, point there, but you can use that as a screwdriver. You can use it for all different kinds of things. Great little knife. Um, slowly working it into my cadre of things. Gonna make a great draw knife and some good things this coming hunting season that I'm going to show you. Alright, so when I say sharp, you want it to be able to basically make little curly cues in your paper. That needs to be extremely sharp. Cut nice clean lines and be able to do so on a consistent basis. That's when you know you have a sharp knife that you can shape with. The uh, next thing, obviously, is its ability to cut. It's making really nice, thin, curly cues there for combustion. Then you want to use that 90 degree. Get your tender going. Get a nice little pile there using that 90 degree. You can even do that on um, some hardwoods and softwoods just with the inner barks and whatnot. That'll give you that same tender. Okay, now you want to use your 90 degree spine and your ferro rod to light the tender you made. Then simply just keep adding smalls to that. You have yourself a fire. So if you don't have sticks you can pick up, everything's extremely soaking wet, which you have a big enough bundle of fat wood, you should be able to light anything that's wet. That shouldn't be a problem. But if you do have a problem and you still want to fire, what do you do? I like to do a split wood fire. Next skill you need to work on is using your knife, the baton. Simply put the edge, the inside edge, as close to the butt of the log as you can, leaving a large surface area to use your hammer which is your bigger log split through the wood like a witch if you need to readjust 
simply come over to this side. Another reason to have that good butt end. Feet on the butt end. And work your way through the wood. Now, why would you want something like that? Do the same thing on the opposite side. Use that spear point. And you have a starter hole for a bow file fire. So, batoning wood. Next skill with your knife you need to acquire is sharpening. I did an article, I'll tag it in here, with uh, I think it was 30 some different ways you can sharpen your knife. You can use it on the glass of your door, your car, sandpaper, tactical rods. Uh, the more bushcraft black even comes with a sharpening stone on there. You can easily sharpen your knife on that stone. Just remember, keep it even on both sides your amount of strokes. You want to keep your uh, edge as good as possible with a uh, Lansky tactical rod. Same thing, you want to get that magic edge side, basically holding it at the exact right angle. Usually they're around 20, 22 degrees, somewhere in that effect. Uh, basically, find the grind that uh, you're using on your knife and Look it up online uh, or contact the manufacturer. They'll tell you what the angle they used was for sharpening that same knife. Uh, the other method I use a lot is sandpaper. This one's probably the easiest to use. I use four, six, eight, um, and then I think it's a thousand. Four, six, eight, and a thousand. Uh, basically, you start the 400 and you do 15 or 20 swipes. Basically, you want to get that nice flat surface. Start it off basically as flat as you can and raise it until you hear a change in the grind. Uh, you do that five or ten times on each side, five or ten times on the other side, and then move over to the other one. Uh, this is not going to work quite as well on this surface because it's not flat and I'm going to drag in different spots. You want as flat a surface as possible to do this. Um, in the field, if I'm not going to use my Lansky tactical rod, the thing I like to use the most is a wet river stone. Um, it has that little bit of grit on it. You keep it wet to keep the blade home. Um, that works probably the best. Uh, just pick up a wet, kind of like a sand, sandish grind on the stone and just stroke your blade across the rock nice and smooth. Um, the other thing that you want to do is always wear a leather belt because you can take your belt off and you can then, once you've sharpened it, just drop the blade to maintain that edge. Um, if you do not have a leather belt, you could build the same type of thing into your sheath and use your sheath as a strop. The uh, leather sheaths obviously make the best. Usually on the back of the belt buckle is where I like to keep my strop area. Uh, basically to have a little bit of compound in it and you can just use that. Other people, if they have a flat top across here, They'll put the compound in the actual top of their sheet to make themselves strong. But if you're in the kydex, you can't really do that. So the best thing you can do is put a little bit of leather on the back or wear a leather belt. So let's recap. Survival knife, meeting the 10 characteristics and your price range. Um, fits well in your hand, all that good stuff. Has to hold up to continued abuse. If you can't afford anything real expensive, go out and grab a um, old hickory butcher knife. This is okay. This one's probably, I don't know, 30 years old. Handles a little bit loose, but it still goes through wood like a champ. Um, still comfortable. Still like it. Uh, if I want to put new scales on it, that's all it takes. Still handles abuse like a champ.
Um, some other companies that I recommend were the Jeff White series, the Indie Hammer Knives, more a Bushcraft Black series, um, of course, Blind Horse Knives and LT Wright Knives. Both great. Sharpening, make sure you can sharpen your knife before you go in the woods. Go out to the creek, grab yourself a field stone, try sharpening that way, um, try stropping with your belt, try using sandpaper, use a tactical rod, use a puck, whatever you want to use. Lansky makes some great materials for field sharpening of sharpened edges. Uh, you know, whether it be the puck for your axe or it be the tactical rod for your knives, they make some great sharpening systems. Uh, sandpaper works great, just not that great in the field because you have the issues of finding a very flat surface. Um, so, get out there, practice sharpening that knife, honing that knife, handling the knife, and batoning wood, making fire. Um, the actual challenge this week is, number one, show me what knife you selected as your survival knife, and number two, to actually make a fire with just a piece of fat wood. If you don't have fat wood, um, you could use whatever kind of man-made material you want or whatever. It doesn't really matter. I just want to see you using that ferrocium rod and that 90 degree spine to remove material from your ferro rod. Uh, there are two different ways you can use that ferro rod, by the way. You can hold it up here and scrape, or if you want to, and it's really windy like it is today, put the ferro rod at the base of your tender and just scrape like that, putting a shower right into your tender. That's probably the most effective for natural materials. If you're using something that has a little bit of uh, kerosene or camp fuel in it, it really doesn't matter. Um, it'll take off like crazy. If uh, you have jute twine, you can make a jute twine tender bundle. Uh, I've got videos on that. I'll try to link that in there too, um, all my firecraft stuff. Uh, make a jute twine tender bundle, hit the ferro rod into it, you'll have poof flame. Um, that's probably the cheapest tinder bundle you're going to get. So fat wood, if you don't have it, uh, your local grocery store in the uh, charcoal section should have it right beside there. Pick up some of those little fat wood sticks there, I think they're like two bucks, and get out there and practice your skills. Uh, the other thing I would like to see is batoning a piece of wood. It doesn't have to be a big one, just can be a little piece of wood. Um, cutting it down to make your firewood for a camp, to make a one stick fire doesn't have to be a total one stick fire at this point. I just want to see you chop the wood into at least four sections, um, preferably more if you can, and get that tender bundle to light those sections of wood if you can. At least try. So, challenge for week one. Get a survival knife, use it, and sharpen it. I look forward to seeing you throughout the series. I know this is a long one, but um, you can send pictures, you can send uh, video you can show whatever but uh, that's your challenge for week one get a survival knife use it